Uh, uh, so we need to wrap up five minutes before. Please reserve your questions till the end or just type it in the chat box. Don't interrupt the speaker in between. Uh, but you are always welcome to ask your questions. We'll take your questions uh, in the last 15 minutes of the session. And uh, please keep your audios off, but keep your videos on. I'll request because otherwise we give an uh, idea to the uh, guest that we are he's speaking to a wall. So rather we keep some of your, our videos on. So I'll request all of you to do that if possible. Um, so uh, now the most important part of introducing our guest. I think Dev Kumar Mitruda doesn't need an introduction because he's very well known in the fields he uh, dwell in. But still, for all of you, just to give take you through what uh, yeah he like um, what are his passions and interests. Uh, so a very warm welcome to Dev Kumar Mitroda uh, to our this to be the to agreeing to be the guests uh, guest for our very first opening session of the semester. Dev Kumar Mitroda wears lot of uh, feathers in his uh, cap. Uh, I'll just try and speak about a few of them. So uh, basically, uh, he is trained as a mathematician. He has been an avid quizzer, a columnist, and a, gra a graphic narrative and comic enthusiast all his life. Presently, he's in the several last few years, he has been teaching comic book and graphic narratives across India. Uh, especially to mention few names is NID Ahmedabad and Vijayawada. He keeps taking classes here, uh, trying to you know inspire students uh, and uh, telling about the uh, basics of this uh, this uh, form. And uh, so, and he's also the founder editor of the uh, anthology of Graphic Narrative Collective called Long Form. Which, which is published by Harper Collins in 2018. Uh, he is, uh, in, at the present time, he is also had, has found his passion in drawing and illustration. He is very much present in the social media, very active on Facebook, Instagram. So please look him up, connect to him. Uh, and without further delay, uh, I'll hand it over to the stage to Dev Kumarda. Dev Kumarda, very warm welcome once again. And sorry for the little troubleshoot in the initial phase. Thank you. Uh, first of all, good morning and thank you all. It's uh, uh, it, we're slightly delayed, but I think we'll make it up. Uh, I mean, see, I'm no master, and in comics, I believe there is there there are no masters. You, you learn, you learn and learn, and that's how you go through the, any art form. It is true. Why only comics? Any art form, it is true. That, but, but things people call that their, their master class and are these, these small things are, are to get introduced and open a few windows into the, into the art itself. Uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I got interested into comics very early on, but uh, unfortunately through a very uh, circuitous route as, as, my, as I would add. I was only five or six years old when my, I discovered my father who had spent a long time in Japan has returned with a lots of uh, Japanese uh, manga. And, and it's not your uh, usual manga because he returned with what we call as artistic and author manga called the Garo magazine. Uh, there are a lot of big, big names uh, uh, who, who, I mean, obviously it, is, it doesn't include Osamu Tezuka or uh, as you may be familiar as animation students and Miyazaki wasn't part of it, but there are several other Tatsumi, uh, there are uh, Suge, uh, then Todihara and lots of other people, they, they were part of it. And, and, and uh, obviously as a five-year-old, I understood nothing because I knew nothing of of J Japanese and, and 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 my father knew very little um, um, uh, other than how to be polite like origato uh, and so on and so forth, which everyone knows. Now that uh, that's how I started. Now from there, 
uh, then I discovered uh, the usual thing of our Chitra Katha and, and uh, uh, Tinkle and other stuff, which came later. Um, now, comics uh, or manga, whatever. Uh, what I'll do today is it's, it, the, there are two presentations with lots of comics thrown in just to expose yourself that you all of you that how the the some nuances into com making comics and mostly talking about comics in a way um, so that you understand as as students of comics and graphic narratives that um, you may not know how to draw very well but still you can create comics if you if you have a good story to tell you can tell it now the thing is the worst part of, 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 of all this is I keep on telling these things across India and some people take it literally that you do not know anything of drawing. You can do a great comic. No, you can't. Let me be honest. When I say you do not need a special training in drawing skills to do a comic. If you have a good story, you, you know how to, how to tell it in, 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 in graphic form, then you can do it. Okay. Okay, let us start without much ado. I'll start sharing my screen. I've got two presentations. One is a little shorter, other one is a slightly longer. Um, um, so the host has stopped my video. Why? I'll just look into it. <laughs> no, no, someone is trying something. Okay. Anyway, they're, they're, I think they're trying to give me. Uh, okay. Uh, so, I guess this is. Uh, I guess we can see your screen. Yes. Okay, you can yes. see it. Great. So, uh, here is here it is. Um, uh, now, uh, as you can see, what you what is on the right and what is on the left, they are two different things. Uh, uh, I mean, no one, everyone knows that A is for Apple, but in comics, we can also say A is for pizza. Now, the thing is, what allows us to say this? Because it's a queer mix of text and visuals, where text in comics is also considered to be a visual, I mean, a visual. We treat everything as a visual in comics. There are no sep no distinction between text and other forms of text, other forms of visuals, where text is merely considered to be one form of visual. Hence, to relate anything to anything, for example, um, you can have words which are called sound making words, and and you can have, um, um, for example, whoosh this particular sound that I mean, you can actually do a draw a straight line across the, the uh, panel uh, and to tell a story. And also, if, if you don't want to do that, you can just write whoosh. That's also give, give you the same kind of meaning. So you see that this kind of mapping of, of and, the, and the human brain is a fantastic thing. It, it, it can actually take in all this and process and give you a good story. So uh, if to become a very good storyteller, you've got to understand the relationship between these, these things. Um, let me try and, um, okay. So we'll start with a short film of five minutes approximately. And then we will get, we'll zip through the rest of the presentation because that is this film actually sets the mood of, of, of what comics is game going. It's not an animation. It's actually a comic book <clears throat> presented in the form of, a, uh, of, an, of an animation. Uh, it's by Mark and Otoa Matthew. It's a kind of a whodunit. And it's, it's a story that everyone knows. It's called Three Seconds. Um, and it is, um, this, is the, this is all about that. This is a detective story lasts for three seconds. And, you can check it out. It's not a very expensive thing to buy. You can buy. I think if you're if you're seriously into this kind of narratives, you should all have this book, and the book should be in the library for all practical purposes. Um, 
Now, what I'll do is uh, now I'll get into some. Um, um, let me try and um, do something. Yeah. Uh, Shudanna, can you see this? We can. We can. Okay, yes. Okay. okay. Perfect. So let me play this. <clears throat>
Yeah, so um, Can you hear me? We can, Devuda. We can see your screen. We can hear you also. Okay, okay. So let me get back to what I was doing. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So I mean, one thing that uh, I I always start any any uh, exposition on comics uh, is through this because it. It actually tells you the possibilities that 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 lies in in in, in this form. Here, uh, I mean, and and there is no essential difference between cinema, between animation, uh, uh, cinema and animation, and animation and comics. The the narrative uh, arc in everything that we see. And everything that we talk about remain the same. It 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 is, it it. I mean, if you want to make a movie out of this, you it's it's very very easy. If you want to make an animation with 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 a little more in into it, it almost looks like an animation. You can do it. So I think this possibility lies in the heart of of comics making. Um, a friend of mine calls comics a, a personal cinema. And I quite tend to agree with it. it's it's just just that the that I mean unless you are you are creating something like the Superman where lots of people are working together or or uh, to create something or you're doing something like a Batman or similar such superhero or or or, or comics where uh, or you're working for Marvel DC or such other big comics making companies then. Of course, it's it's a different story, but I think it is um, absolutely important to know that comics is actually very little to do with a group activity. It's it's a it's a kind see idea. You cannot create ideas in 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 a, in, in in with a lot of people. What, what I mean, what you can do is you can actually jot down the entire book in in in, in a what we call a thumbnail form, uh, like a storyboard that you do. Um, and then you can call in artists who can just refine it and there are colorists and do certain things. So actually comics making is a lonely act. So in, 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 in the world of comics, there are two kinds of comics. One is you, you, you tend to get a lot of other people to do it. And the other form, the other is very important is what we call creator owned comics which are you think of the story you think do your thumbnails do everything and then you also finish it publish it that's that's a, that's a move, that's the way people go are going um, nowadays um, now just to move ahead with this we just had this okay now the question comes Comics, if it is comics, then what is, what's that? The first thing is comics, uh, if you think of comics, I, I would like to go back a bit. And, and, and it, this is a story which started in, in 2018, sometime in January. And then uh, French President Emmanuel Macron agreed to loan Bayou Tapestry to uh, Britain. As you know that uh, what is a tapestry uh, that um, and uh, and this is a very exciting news for anybody who who lives in Britain, um, and and this is what happened was um, 
that uh, uh, the, here is uh, some detail about the, the bio tapestry. It's 950 years old. And it was tapestry was, cre it was created, might have uh, leave France for first time in 2020, didn't happen. Uh, of course, you know why. And then it carried on with some details which are there on, on, the, on, the, on the BBC website, you can see. What is exciting is the it is the best known comics from Europe. And why I put in the word arguably, because uh, if you look at this, uh, uh, there, are, there are people who look at comics in a very different way. But if you are looking at the tradition of comics in Europe, this is the best example. It has words. It looks like somewhat like this. Um, it, it, has, it has words, as you can see. It has got text, which is, which, and, and it has obviously got a lot of visuals. And everything is, is embroidery. And this is fantastic. Everything is embroidery. It talks about the Norman conquest. And, and, and it, it actually is a long, long kind of a, a thing. And, and it's so famous when people in, I mean, look at it, it they get a sense of history just by looking at it. Um, and, and, that, uh, and, and, and here the story is extremely well told, the kind of massacre that happened and, and then the, and the, the whole thing about the, the, the participants in this, in this um, whole battle, uh, who won, who lost, and also the, some other stuff. For example, um, it, it also has this. Uh, can anyone tell me what's there on the right-hand corner, which is in a, in a red circle? Anyone? That's part of the bio tapestry to see what kind of details they've gone into this making. Anyone? Dev Kumar, can your screen go a little up? Because at my end, it is getting cut a little bit. Uh, screen cannot go up. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it is fixed. So anyway, so uh, OK, anyway, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah, anyone trying? Okay, so I mean, I will not uh, use up time like this. So, uh, is, yeah, uh, may I? Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like one of those um, conspiracies where um, it looks like a spaceship in like an olden time. No, 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 no. <laughs> it looks like one of those conspiracy things. No, no, no. no. There's nothing conspiracy in in 1066. I don't think you, uh, you there were. Too many of them, unless it, it involved church and other people. Anyway, this is Haley's comet. Haley's like Haley's comet. This is Haley's comet, and and the comet visits us once in uh, seventy six years, and the astronomers actually got their clue about Haley's comet by looking at bio tapestry. And when they, um, what they call this, this is called a periodicity of a comet. So. Why I'm showing you all this, because even if you look at comics in very early form, research is extremely important because, see, then this was the only record of that battle of the Norman conquest. And uh, with, in such detail, it's not a written account or something. It's th it, this that actually helps us to learn history, what has happened. So comics actually have been playing a role, I mean, big role, um, for a long time. So, but if you look at the tradition of, of comics in, in Europe, we can go back, go back a little uh, further and look at Altamira in Spain. Um, uh, so here, if you look at this, um, this is the most famous uh, thing that you'll get from Altamira, this bisons, um, I mean, they're, uh, they're there. The, I mean, now people say the first artists um, happen to be uh, uh, a, a woman uh, who actually recorded all this, uh, though there is some doubt about it, but I, I'll, I'm, I'll be too happy to know if it was, I mean, if someone actually comes up with a theory which sounds very credible enough to 
tell me that it's it's by a woman. Um, I mean, it sounds very, very, very plausible, but that's not the issue. The issue is that we look at comics as something that is a sequential, which means something happening of, after after the other. It may not be a straight line happening. It can branch out into different things, what we call a non-linear form. That means one event may not directly lead into something. It might branch out into several small events and then something else breaks out and then something else merges and then that kind of a continuity can happen. But in this case, I mean, you might turn around and question, no, people, we, I re, we read history of art and, and, and it is there. Uh, how can you claim this is a comic? Actually, we, what we don't see is, is this kind of representation. When you see this kind of representation, as you see, if you look at from the left to the right, the way we read, we see there is a definite sequence, sequence that has been drawn. It's actually a chase that's happening. There are lots of animals running and then falling off the cliff or something. Um, then there are a lot of people running in to do. And if you go look at the top, there are some other figures on top. So there is a, some kind of sequentiality, uh, which, uh, which I call Ur comics. Um, and, 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 and obviously there is a sense of telling, telling stories, using, using visual forms. And, in, in, and, and this is both for record and it may be some, for something else. But the interesting bit is that there is the sense of comics making was there in human being for a very, very long time. And some people say with the advent of language, we, we, we somehow lo lost touch with this kind of thing. And then obviously it, it got into much more an organized form with an institutional form, which, I, which we call art. It has got its own history and, and things. But I mean, just to tell raw stories, I mean, it's, it's why only Altamira? There are lots of stories on, on Bhimbetka in, 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 um, uh, in Madhya Pradesh in India. There are, I mean, if you look at those Gond paintings, if, if you look at, they've got a tradition thousands of years old. If you look at worldly paint, worldly creations, those things also tell you, um, um, or, 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 or Matrani Bachi, uh, that you if, you, if you look at, look at those. Um, so these are traditions which, which actually, which were are all visual. And suddenly all this got lost in, 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 in kind of a translation when we invented the language and we, we started communicating in a way like I'm doing it to you. And those visual uh, comics in a way is a kind of a rediscovery into, into those associations between um, which you call strictly visual and, and some things which call text. And then you, may, you, you actually merge them to come up with a concrete theory on something. Okay, let's move on. Uh, now, if you look at this is the signature uh, of the person who created all this and, and it's, it's only a hand signature. Um, you do not know um, who created it. I most likely a woman people feel and I quite like it when they say it. Now, recent discovery of a, of a huge large collection of prehistoric rock in Amazonia, all this you can read. Um, pushes it, I mean, this kind of storytelling further back. It, it's, uh, I mean, if you look at these things, we are talking about 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, even 10,000 years, if in looking in Europe and other places that I, Bimetka and other things that we talked about. But this one, it pushes it back to, back to I mean, 12,500 years. Uh, so comic storytelling started then, and it's kind of stuff like this. So we'll go, zip through these images which are fascinating in a way and and they're they're absolutely beautiful um see everything there is some action going on there there there's some kind of a, a recording of num i mean num possibly number recordings with those marks um uh, and then these kind of stuff this is on this uh, rock shelf, uh, as we can see uh, in Amazonia. Um, if you look at some close-ups, they're, they're absolutely fascinating and beautiful stuff. And, and this is so old. And this is obviously looks like a, someone's doodle book, but it isn't. Uh, and, and, and obviously the rock shelf 
was was the ancient artists uh, google uh, book now we come to the modern form in 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 epileptic epileptic is a famous graphic novel by french author david b so you see the same primitive forms which you just saw um appeared again in david b and this is kind of a, raises a question to say does our subconscious store memories in in primitive form and 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 it's a, it's a kind of a debate that going on i mean it may or may not doesn't make a difference to our lives but this is very interesting and this is an interesting area to study and 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 uh, represent in comics form there is a whole area uh, of mental uh, illness and and disorders that as uh, where comics is making giant strides and and this is also epileptic is 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 uh, david b's brothers epileptic um, fits and and their their trials and tribulations with it um so so i i just to bring in to 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 the continuity it still still happening uh now i mean when you say when you when you were slowly coming to those were ancient forms and now in 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 this is if you ask me this is a comic yes it is it is it is about a very tyrant kind of a uh, land owner uh, this is from his uh, pyramid um his name was menna uh, the man in the blue circle and and uh, the right you, you go from left to right and then go from uh, right to left and then you go to left to right this is how you read this story and 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 this is the kind of stuff that 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 was happening on the walls of pyramids uh um this is from from um uh, south america uh, the incas uh, were also doing a bit of comics uh, and and this is uh, from um, the story of uh, prince h deer tiger claw and how do you read it this is from a book by scott mcleod understanding comics and 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 he has actually giving given us a key to study um, this kind of stuff let's move on okay the modern comics as we see it today with panels and pages and other things um many people say uh, has its root in this um this is actually by william hogarth and a british artist of repute he actually charted the course of a life of a, of a of a country squire a country squire in 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 england and his and uh, it's it has got several the um it has got eight eight large paintings which actually are sequential in the film it's called the air um then came the levy then came the orgy then came the arrest and then the marriage the gaming house the prison and the madhouse this is the entire it's called the rake's progress it's 1730 um uh three and and uh and then how how important is this um it continued to in, even a 300 years almost 300 years after uh this is Ro ronald sir a very famous uh cartoonist he is actually he did rake's progress in the form of an actor's progress and it, with overture success triumph temptation downfall and ruin so this carried on this tradition carried on for uh, is still carrying on and this is form of storytelling and obviously you see you added a bit more in the form of what we call text or other visual forms <coughs> uh now it comes to then obviously when you when hogarth was a bit um um in still in the in in what you call the realm of art now comics as comics actually uh, it, it though it started little earlier but um it i mean a lot of people in europe give this person the he's a swiss german uh, and 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 worked also in 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 paris 
and his name uh, is Rodolf Topfer. Rodolf Topfer, we are discovering many things now. He is considered to be the game changer in comics. He actually changed. I mean, it's 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 not exactly. I mean, there are several other people around, but Topfer. What I mean, if you look at it, you actually give comics its form. The, I mean, what if if you there is something called a modern form of comics, as I was talking with panels, um, your pages, then speech bubbles and other stuff. It came from him. Now, obviously, there are debates as we as we see. Now, when all this is happening and tougher and everything, in 1989 at a meeting in, I guess, somewhere in Italy, there is an out, out, uh, out I mean, astounding claim made by a group of uh, people. The first ever comics was drawn in 1896. Now, it, uh, I mean, before we get into 1896, um, uh, there, there, this is, uh, this guy's name is Utkolt. Um, this is the first ever Yellow Kid cartoon in color. Um, this is May 5th, 1895 to be published. A everything happens in o Hogan Alley. Uh, let me remind you all that comics is actually a very um, lower middle class, working class kind of a thing, um, activity initially. And uh, though now, I mean, comics is presented in, in huge art galleries uh, across the world, but it's still considered to be a low art. And, and it, it is um, the practitioners, though they're getting uh, uh, noticed by a lot of other people. And lo and behold, lots of people from the English, English, English literature kind, they're taking um, they're getting into this business of trying to analyze comics in their own form. We won't get into there. Uh, obviously, comics has its own theory and the way, own way uh, we study things um, our way. And hence, um, but that claim that I just comic started in is, is, is related to this. Hence, I presented this yellow kid thing. Uh, this is America. Now, this is cons because of this, the claim was made. That the it is called the first definitive comic strip, October twenty fifth, eighteen ninety six. Now this is uh, if you look at this, this guy is called Yellow Kid, uh, and 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 um, if you look at the earlier, it is this corner. Now he's not wearing kind of a bluish um, stuff. This is on light that small boy. Uh, he is the Yellow Kid, um, and then he became this we see what we see is a speech bubble now and a speech bubble and and a kind of a sequentiality and they claim the americans mostly uh, claim then that this is the first definitive comic strip i'm not too sure whether this is correct uh, it is it is not because i mean there these are other kinds of uh, uh, forms that Obviously, he was doing um, Ut calls, and uh, and and so the definition came to be: What is a comic? Comics is nothing but a sequential uh, narrative with a speech bubble. Now that's a too restrictive a definition to to actually. Now, what about this? This is by Marie Duval. It ha it a appeared before eighteen seventy four. And, and obviously there were others, uh, uh, Tougher was also there. Um, uh, now, this kind of a dispute and uh, went on and in understanding comics, uh, Scott McLeod tried to give us a, some kind of definition what comics might be. He called, these are juxtaposed pictorial and other images in deliberate sequence. Now he explained, I mean, if you look at the bottom, he he also, I mean, every the book is written in the comic book form, by the way, uh, entire book, this understanding comics, the invisible art was Scott McLeod. So he says that juxtaposed pictorial and other images in deliberate sequence intended to convey information and or to produce an aesthetic response in the viewer. 
So if you are looking at an illustrated um, manual for a for an for an electronic gadget, you are also looking at a count, according to. So so he actually when he did this, he actually included stuff like um, when you say this. Of course, there are issues with with Scott McCloud. I've just raised one. I think one is good enough. We 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 will see while. Sequentiality also formed the core of comics artist and theoretician Skull McLeod's definition of comics as juxtaposed pictorial and other images, whatever. The most important of words and consequently the multimodal facet of comics is excluded. McLeod also inflates a range of possible, possible comics, including the Max Ernst, um, whatever that in French and all, also Bayou Tapestry. Now, this kind of objection has been raised. Now, what is the multimodal thing? The effective communication cannot simply be drawn on language, but also on a range of shared Im uh, symbols and images because of contemporary text and, and always composed of uh, multiple semiotic uh, modes. Uh, so, I mean, without getting into the much detail into this theoretical thing, it essentially is trying to say that Scott McLeod's assertion is is based on a particular way of looking at things. Comics is much more, and you can't just restrict restrict yourself by saying, uh, by I mean, everything is comics. Okay, so fine. So that is okay. Now, when you say, I mean, when you when you say um, Max Ernst's work, this is a page from that book by by. German artist uh, Max Ernst. Um, he was a Dada painter. He created this. It's a kind of a collage uh, novel um, by him. Um, now, <clears throat> it's still into, we are still into trying to find out what comics. It's, there, is a, there is a joke that goes around if you ask somebody who's, what is life and time, and we get to know these are two magazines, uh, popular magazine. One doesn't exist, one still exists. Um, obviously, someone else is objecting to this is a master class. Oh, okay. Uh, we will go into something else. Okay. So, uh, and even when we ask why comics, um, there, there, it's a title of a book by uh, American comic scholar Hillary, Hillary Shute. If, if, you, if you're interested, you can check it out. It gives you a lot of information on, on what comics is all about and how to go about it. Um, okay. Now, why comics to appreciate any art form is to experience it, both the popular and the avant-garde. Chart its course ever since the birth in the caves of Altamira, Amazonia, and elsewhere in the world to its present form, the fastest growing segment of human artistic ex expression a form that is constantly responding to every form of human inquiry and um, reinventing itself. And that is why comics. Um, how current it is, it is as current as this. It is as current as the third lockdown being imposed in UK and elsewhere. This is by my friend, Rachel Smith. Um, it's, it's a series that she does on the net um, for quarantine comics now she's doing. Uh, so. You can actually, I mean, a lot of people do if you are on Insta or, or Facebook or even on some people talk about it on Twitter, uh, not much of it. Um, and there are, of course, blogs and, 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 and webtoons and other stuff. Or it is as it happened in 2020. Uh, it's, a, it's a part of a comic. Um, you know who this, who this guy is. Uh, or So... It's it, it, all about comics is all about this or what happened in our part of the world. This is April 13th, 2020 Bandra station. This is the cover from a magazine called Kichurai, uh, which means cricket in, in Telugu. Uh, this is the cover on, on, on that uh, incident that a lot of people, they want, these are obviously migrant workers. They wanted to go home. And this is my take on it. This is my comic. Um, it's a one shot comic trying to capture the uh, thing. Uh, and I did also this last year, uh, which has been published since. Um, 
this is a migrant workers progress it's the same thing i did as rake's progress just to experiment it's called the news the search the refusal the anxiety uh the the hunger the weight the assurance and the dust so obviously and or it is as timeless um as nancy nancy is something created by ernie bushmuller we'll come back to it later this is not by bushmuller of course um uh, and 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 it, this is nancy has carried on since it is created in well back in in the, the golden days of comics in 1930s a strip uh, still uh, there are other artists who do, who do it but this is what it is now i'm just trying to i mean when i was trying to find out more about comics in last year i i got a mail from a friend and who actually pointed me to this thing uh of uh uh it's 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 a kind of thing of 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 lakota indian lives it's a uh, it's again the similar types of bayou tapestry which was happening that area obviously it is much later than than bayou um and and he actually sent me this images which are fantastic uh, uh, to look at and 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 these are absolutely looks like panels and there are sequentiality that things are happening over a period of time there there the things i mean this is actually uh, the image there if you look at it closely and these are the some of the close ups obviously this is not embroidery this is uh, kind of a paint um or drawings so as to say uh, and and it's it's they, they these are sequential things and and as number of people who died which you see the marks like that we keep those cricket scores um uh, some of you who have played cricket or some of you who you actually been to the field you see people keep scores like 1 2 3 4 then cut across it's five it's a set of five and so on and so forth so this this is essentially the kind of stuff that happened and 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 uh and it it actually uh, you know uh with with the same situation when the white man came and it is their territory they started and then also drought and other stuff um uh, and everything is recorded it's a kind of a bloody history which which that uh, piece of cloth that you saw uh, and you see number of people how number of people gone 5 10 15 20 25 and so on and so forth and it's a fantastic absolutely this uh, this recording it also brings us to to a similar kind of thing of 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 getting into um uh, the 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 area of 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 uh, of franking franking created this famous strip called gasoline alley gasoline alley happens to be one of the greatest uh, strips ever created um it gives you a kind of a feeling that uh, comics artists were extremely sophisticated way back in 19 uh 20 i mean even 18 if you look at mari duval then then in the 19th century also late 19th century from then on the comics storytelling has been very very sophisticated they are using all kinds of material if you look at this looks like a straightforward kind of a 1930s phase tale of of linear storytelling but the moment you you go into a slight bit of detail and suddenly look at this this is the kind of stuff that uh if you one that i've marked with yellow and and red um uh, yes rahul you want to say something uh, yeah sir uh, you mentioned one shot earlier what exactly is a one shot Uh, which which one i i didn't get to you you mentioned like a one shot comic uh, about um, the some some previous one and then i wanted to know like what exactly is a one shot uh, comic one shot comics yeah 
no one shot one shot comics is just one i mean it it means one once shot. it has been done once is it like a one step comic no 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 it's just done once uh, it has not been continued oh okay just like a premier teaching kind of yeah thing. yeah it could be it could be one page five pages 20 pages one one time it's done once and then it's not a series uh dipwad we can take it as a question at the end we you can yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, keep your questions for then yeah okay so uh and and this is uh, obviously it tells you something if you look at that that panel that we are talking about see uh, i mean if you were a, for the students it should be just you keep looking at comics all my discoveries that i've made is not by reading huge fat tomes by reading comics i read comics throughout the day it gives me immense pleasure and i read anything and everything that goes in the name of comics and cartoons and anything um i do not watch much on television or i'm not in i'm not a very very animation animation the stricter sense of term person unless it is very interesting obviously i see a lot of animation otherwise um but the more you read the more you discover i when i looked at this it just how do you how do you how do you tell what's going on going into someone else's mind what do you how do you yeah so hello yeah so i if i if you look at this this is this is just fantastic if you look at the comics uh, otherwise and then the continuity there on on it's a simple comic immediately raised to a different level and that was franking's genius it's not only in this there are several other things that what he has done is unbelievable it's a mirror of the time the art movement of the time everything has been captured in this strip um not in this particular one but in the generally the gasoline alley scripts okay so i guess we've come to the end of this and we will i'll start with a new one um i've got it here keyed in um i guess everyone can see this uh and we can yeah, yeah we can carry on with this uh So now we are going going into a little detail of the background over. Now we will go into the little detail of quickly going through. I'm going a little fast because uh, because of this. My I'm I'm a bit of a technological ignoramus and I, and that's my problem. Um, so I couldn't do things in a way that I wanted to do. Um, okay, so let's carry on. <coughs> So if you look at comics, these are just general something from Tintin, something from some something else. Um, so these are comics uh, which are uh, from from the bygone era. Uh, now we're still looking for a definition in 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 an alley as such. Even still now, after what I'll say, I, I'll be still be looking at what a what is comics is all about. when alison bechdel the best sell cartoonist of fun home if you writing you can write this write her name she's a lesbian cartoonist uh, and and one who actually uh, is an activist and 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 whose best work is fun home um her recent work has just appeared uh, this year uh, just check it out on the name alison bechdel she according to her it's learning a new syntax a new way of ordering ideas what a beautiful way to put it but when you think about it it's 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 a quite bit complicated than just thinking about it we the only thing that you that can happen to you is it's we all do it intuitively it's not that we can learn it we do it intuitively and hence these things come back to us in a in a very different one so so if you try and learning the syntax and then do it it will be difficult but first try and get the idea intuitively into your mind how would i if i look at something or if i've got some story to tell in comics form how do i tell it in in that's a question that you need to be asking yourself what she is saying it's a self learning it's not it's not 
it's not something this syntax was there when people were doing Altamira. This syntax were there when people were doing biotapestry. Um, we need to think or or doing uh, doing those little beautiful things on uh, Mena's uh, uh, your uh, tomb or pyramid. So now Art Spiegelman, and the name should you should all remember. He won a special Pulitzer Award for Mouse, a Survivor's Tale. M-A-U-S. This name, anyone who's studying, studying anything to do with graphic art should go through. So he says that from being an icon of illiteracy, uh, during my childhood, it was definitely, if you read comics, you, only the bad people who sit at the back bench do nothing, only read comics. That is how the things were being, I mean, told to us. We carried on, our comics got confiscated. As I had a Jesuit education and all my comics got confiscated, but still carried on. I mean, so a lot of things like, for example, Indrajal comics used to be there and it was very cheap, um, 50 pesa per comic and you used to buy. Um, and those things were quickly got confiscated and 50 pesa those days were huge by the way. Okay, so now what has happened, because of its sophisticated nature of comics, comics is getting into classroom, it is getting into English literature um, syllabus, there are people who are actually teaching comics and their sophisticated nature of, I mean, there are a lot of research going on in comics worldwide. So, from being someone who's looked down upon what kind of art is this, I mean, and obviously uh, who else but Art Spiegelman knows he's gone through several such situations where he has actually suffered. Uh, but the definition I think I like the most is one that I've outlined, I mean, lined in, uh, uh, outlined in, in, in red. It is said that while prose, uh, the thing is, co what comics are a, a valid art form, the jury is still out there. There are there exists some uncomfortable impurity in the combination of two forms of picture writing, that is, pictographic cartoon symbols and the letter shaped that form words. While others, it's not a big deal. So what it says is, this is Daniel Klaus, one of my favorite cartoonists. This is from um, his work, Ice Haven. Um, now, what is this? This What he says is, while prose, that is text, text, tends towards the pure interiority coming to live in the reader's mind. You read a word, there's something that forms in your mind. And cinema gravitates toward exteriority, that, that everything is in front of you. And then from there, the imagination starts. The, uh, the, of the experiential spectacle that is there, that's kind of a physical relationship with the image, sort of. Um, perhaps comics in its embrace of both the interiority of the written word and physicality of image more closely replicates the true nature of human consciousness and the struggle between private self-definition and corporeal reality. I think if you look at it, 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 you just, I mean, immediately you feel, I'll give you a very simple example, uh, which I've done by me. I mean, it's a very silly example, but still it, it has something in it. Um, so that kind of thing where, 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 where this indecision, where, I mean, the of interpretation, whether, whether what, what the word can give you more, what the image can give you. So, if you can strike a fantastic balance between the two, the comics become a, a kind of a rip success because it gives you a different kind of a storytelling, uh, a nar a different narrative than the word itself or the picture. Okay, so next. Um, so this is the book from where it came. Um, it's Harry Nabors comic book, uh, comic book critic. 
Now, what I was talking about a simple example, this is my example. So these are words, like well, they reached the wooded area with tall trees, Sarah pointed at the broken fence and she said, what she found there, um, yes, yeah, said Tim under the tree, under, uh, that tree under the fence. The, Tim fished out a black and white photograph and showed it to Sarah. My God, exclaimed Sarah, she, was she had gorgeous eyes. They walked in silence for a while. The sun was at its glorious best and then Tim spoke. She was a friend of mom. Sarah's mind was still on the crime. Did the police find the killer? Okay, so that is all about. Now, if you look at some pictures, say these are just isolated pictures. You didn't know what's the story. This, this would have... Would, I mean, there is something that will you'll you'll extract by looking at just those pictures, and then finally you can make a comic just by putting rearranging certain things. Um, obviously, every not everything has been said. So, um, and 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 then it gives you a certain kind of sequentiality. I moves from left to right while reading English. Uh, obviously, in Japanese manga, you read differently because their Japanese reading is a different thing. Uh, you different uh, top to bottom you read. Uh, uh, and then this kind of things, um, this kind of, uh, that this is, this is very basic, very rudimentary. Um, it, it's nothing actually, but that is a simple three-step way of showing comics can be, they, can you can think of making comics like this. Um, and it's a different kind of, if you look at it and, and I, in isolation, and and those two, it's it, it will convey a totally different kind of a, uh, I mean meaning in in, in it's, it's it it should add a different layer of meaning. It's not, not everything has happened here, but uh, obviously it should happen. It also tells you a kind of process that comics some of the comics artists go through while creating such stuff. Now uh, I'll just skip through this. This is a thing on I mean uh, on 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 that I was talking about the drawing thing. I mean, if drawing is not important. I mean, I mean, if you are telling a story, this is a fantastic story. Um, if you read uh, Y Comics, it's there. You can, uh, this page is there. You can check, check it out. This is by Gary Panther, a famous cartoonist. So you don't have to make pretty pictures uh, to everything. Now, this is Dick Susanis. And in 2001, he submitted a PhD thesis in comics form and was awarded a degree. And the book was later published as Unflattening by Harvard University Press, their first ever comic book. So comics actually um, is everywhere. If you so as to say, why should I do comics? Um, yeah, uh, um, someday it will obviously it'll, it'll give us more bread. Obviously, right now it's not possible. You do something else to also getting into comics. Now, a quick run through that Altamira thing. It's a, it's a short comic about, so... Uh, one. So uh, this is Marcus Gruber's comic of Altamira Cave, Environment and Society Portal. If you go there, the comics is there. The translation is also there. You can, you can check it out. Okay. Great. Now, the heart in the heart of the comics lies fragmentation. Uh, it's on reliance of dividing space to create continuous narrative. These are important. If you're looking at comics per se, want to pursue comics, then this kind of stuff you'll come across. I mean, you're talking about new language, learning new syntax, these other stuff. So furthermore, each division uses scrap of both words and images that are to a varying extent depend on each other for their meaning. One is dealing of two kinds of disjointedness, those between the words and images and those between the panels. Now, if you don't have a panel also, you can do the same thing. Now, disjointedly sequential nature of the comics to render is ideal for depicting morphologies and by extension, hybrid figures and spaces that can attain a degree of vastness to their incompleteness. 
uh, and, and, and inter, in, enters uh, thysis. So it's an intervening space, especially very small one, have to be filled up by, by the reader's imagination. Now, this kind of thing is, is there in Scott McLeod, as you know that uh, even if something is not there, what people say in, when, when you're do, looking at gutter space, that's a space between two panels in a comic book, that space has got more activity than the and the and what ha happening within the panel because there the mind imagines and actually suppose you see one one frog jumping in one panel and other you see it has fallen into the water the mind will join up that whole movement of the frog jumping up in the air and falling into the thing and 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 form its own narrative so that is what is being talked about. And this is what the story thing, I mean, how cleverly you can use these um, will, will make you a better cartoonist uh, over time. So now the, the, the trouble comes that, uh, I mean, I mean, as a cartoonist or, or, or as a researcher or, or someone who's interested in this, first of all, to find why read comics, the most common answer one gets is fun. So that's why people believe it's a kind of a juvenile entertainment product firmly. And it and then the name sounds like comic. Comic, it's comic, the word is not correct. You are either it's a comic book or it's comics. Comic is a person who stand and and and, and it's a kind of stand-up come who give you say funny lines and make you laugh. But um, comics is 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 is, is much more serious stuff. Huh? So if you if you if you say it's only fun, then if you're looking at stuff like this, um, then uh, now I mean obviously uh, those uh, love to kick a few butts. On, I mean kind of stuff that that falls into this. So despite so comics is not actually fun in the fun sense of the time. Obviously there is a lot of humor, there is a lot of wit, there are a lot of things to make you laugh. That's okay, but that doesn't mean it's fun. Fun in the sense that okay, it's a childish kind of way of looking at things and hence the problem is comics has always been with the children now let, let's get a theory out of way i mean reading graphic novels is the most participatory form of reading that's my quite maybe there are linked to history critical theory and literature could be uh, then reading comics is a connection to almost every i've added the word counter culture and counter platform uh, culture platform. Let's explore. Now, in a in a study, this study is not important. Two thousand nine, adolescent literacy scholar um, Botzakis uh, claimed that an increasing acceptance of value of the comic books. Um, there are a lot of people he interviewed. That's not important. The conclusion is comics hold different meaning to serve different purposes for different people. Many of which are crucial to creating an integrated self and existing more peacefully. That's what he found out. Now, if you look at comics, it is into religion, religion theology with, as he said, Botsakis, that different people. This is book of Genesis by Robert Crumb. Obviously, it's not the usual book of Genesis. If you look at it, um, this is uh, from that. Uh, then it's into music with hip hop family tree by Ed Pixar. Uh, it's not the regular, your regular history book kind of stuff on music. It's slightly different. Then this is from Hip Hop Family Tree. Very good book. This is hip hop. This is football with Roy of Rovers. Um, uh, very famous ones used to be published in India. Um, and this is now the current uh, form of uh, Roy of Rovers. And the good thing about there is Rocky of the Rovers, which is a uh, girl, obviously, soccer is becoming a girl's game, uh, and it's it's great thing too. Then into Afro American history with John Lewis and Nate Cooper Powell. Um, this is more to do with uh, the um, the kind of uh, movement that that sixties and seventies Americans saw. Uh, this is again. I said this is into the kind of history. Then into Weimar history and the rise of Nazis with Jason Lutz Berlin. Um, one of the fam very famous works uh, into get into this kind of stuff. Uh, then there is a chance discovery. 
if you look at this, and then this I learned from very, very famous person. He once uh, was giving an interview and he said this. Um, this is Fran uh, Francisco Goya's uh, painting, uh, The Massacre of uh, May the 3rd uh, in uh, early 19th, uh, 18th century, it, when Napoleon's soldiers massacred the, the Spanish nationalists. Um, now, this thing actually is kind of a comic form. You can see the transition of time within the thing. If you see the people on the right uh, uh, who are being brought in to be shot, there's a guy wearing a white kurta being shot, uh, shirt, and then the people who have died are on the left. And there is action. So it's almost like a comics book. Um, the entire comics book told and the narrative is there within the, it's a fantastic painting, stands on its own right. In addition, this is what I learned it from an interview by Joe Sacco, uh, the famous cartoonist um, uh, and the creator of Palestine and Seferi Agoratse, uh, Agoratse and other, other similar works. Now, keep that image in mind. So this is a, a magazine that is published every year. The world we are fighting for, it's called World War Three magazine. Um, it's a comics magazine. In that, there is a excerpt from the Puerto Rican War um, and, and, and disappeared. It's an interesting thing. It's by John Vasquez, um, uh, Medias, and, and if you if you if you notice the occupation of, of of Spain by Napoleon, the Spanish were at the receiving end. Here also, the Spanish speaking people of at the receiving end, and who were the occupants? The Americans. And this was something that is uh, I noticed. And just to say that you can actually adapt things, um, but do not actually. There is no plagiarization of something. This is the moment you look at it, it's a kind of a hat tip to, to, to the great comics person, um, uh, to that great, great art of, uh, sorry, Francesco Goya. Now, let us do a bit more into, the comics survived by battling with high art and thus they have a sense of defiance built in. As with any other working class art form, such as jazz, blues, or cabaret, comics has a sense of rebellion in its purpose. It has a prime mover of cramp. It was a prime mover of counterculture, flower power for a long time. And here is, I always go back to Ernie Bushmiller. He has something to uh, other to say. Uh, so this is what it is, his take on, 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 on modern art. Not a very charitable. Obviously, this was a battle. And this is one of the brightest cartoonists, Eleanor Davis of America. And, and this is from the latest thing. And you will see, this is the problem that is everywhere. So just look at the stuff that she has created. So See, Eleanor is direct in a depiction of fascist forces of the US administration, but Argentinian military junta was much more repressive. Hence, they did not allow um, Hector German Osterwell to, to say things in the way he wanted to say. And he took the, guy, it took the form of a science fiction tale set in um, uh, your Buenos Aires and in the 1950s, uh, and and it became uh, the kind of a beacon for uh, he he obviously paid for it he and his uh, daughters suddenly vanished everyone says the junta actually got back on in the early 70s um, so this is the book uh, translation published by Fantagraphics the Eater Not is the name of the book and these are the kind of stories, storytelling that was happening. It's actually telling about Junta. So when I say A is for pizza, this is A is for pizza. 
you got to know the stories and then you then you tell it your way this is another one this is published on the spanish junta of of franco's um those days are called franco's boys because they want to erase the history when 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 the when the republicans won and 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 the others lost the other group the leftists they were removed they mercilessly killed and some of their children were taken into this homes and they wanted to refine and reform them and into someone who who would on, only talk about franco's uh, carlos jimenez's uh, multiple award winning tale actually talks about that uh, those boys and uh the resistance again came back in 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 america in a bigger way when when frashua smoli the wife of uh, art spiegelman and and the art director of of uh, uh new york and her daughter nadia launched this free tabloid on the women's day in march in 2017 the trump entered uh, white house and and it it actually showed uh the kind of thing uh, it's called grab back you know why grab back um, um and then this this is the kind of stuff they were doing in india obviously dystopian times are there and and you can actually uh look at obviously and and this is my take on on an incident that happened in delhi uh, just to show that you just need one image and then you can play around it So, anyways, so and Chris Ware is one such legend in 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 modern comics. He just got uh, the most prestigious um, uh, award from Angoulême, the what I call the mecca of comics in France. And uh, he said this: there is there is a magic when you read an image that moves in your mind. and comics is all about that and so um in comics and graphic novels uh, or graphic narrative form or structure is the messenger and content is king basic structure i will not go into the detail that you learn it uh, basically situation complication resolution and end therefore so situation first uh, comics describe the situation where all the main participants are introduced if uh, this is by the latest sensation in comics ml ferris it's called a bite this is how she got uh, paralyzed when she was bitten by a, a mosquito which carried the west nile virus and 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 she did publish this uh, as a prequel uh, no, as, as 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 a, as a tale uh, because her book the my favorite thing is monsters got all the awards possible and 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 we are still waiting for the second volume the first one is published uh, it's a beautiful book and it everything is done with big pen pen and nothing else and that's how she draws and and she actually created a new kind of storytelling style um so obviously if you look at this the situation with the relic multiple panels to describe the situation in the case of bite one was if one was good enough and she did everything so um complication this stage introduce a problem unexpected opportunity and other into the situation a uh, change that is a problem for at least one of the main characters so in her case in in the same bite she did it this way and resolution the her stage presents resolution the form of a partial and complete response to a problem 
character and and this is by it can be done in one step or through several steps yeah this is the kind of steps that she talks about and then the resolution in the stage aftermath uh, complication and then see even there may not be any resolution also that is also fine now i added the left thing the runaway bestseller and the, that is not part of the comic only up to to be continued <coughs> is is a her story so this is the kind of end she she envisaged and and uh, this is how she told us her story um obviously these are there i mean someone is recording it so you can go back and 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 i'm just leaving it a few seconds to so that um these are all things that you can do uh now now if you if you look at building stories some notes on the structure of comics comics depend on visual and verbal elements involved in varying degree of symbiosis each panel with its combination of words and images is embedded in a network of relationship with other panels and media within and beyond the comic book this is theory gronstein's concept of tressage or braiding that unfolds between panels in system de la bande dessinée or system of comics um um uh, this uh, this thing uh, is actually um this is the french comics theory it i mean the heart, the heart of french comics theory is this there are other things other several points but this is a departure from what comic or macleod did because macleod uh, it's it's a transition from panel to panel in this case here is gronstein he considers the entire book um i am not getting into this server, subversiveness of the medium so several things will come up um uh, i'm just leaving it for some some seconds so that uh, it is recorded okay on past present and future forms in comics you can actually represent everything together this is from paul moves out by michel rebagia gliati published by drawn and quarterly here you can see uh, the person who i mean the, i mean all the time lines i mean past present and future time everything is represented together i mean this is only possible in comics this is this is a fantastic example uh, the, and this is the page from where it came from if you look at the page also you'll get an idea better idea of what is what uh, what is that i'm trying to she's talking about an incident that happened in the past um and then she's talking in the present and obviously uh, i mean uh, the 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 representation of the future lies in uh, in someone who's reading it in 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 now okay uh, uh this is uh, uh, an adaptation of lewis carroll jabberwock which my uh, one of my uh, young uh, students did last year uh, she, and we changed everything to a more adapted it to a modern thing just to show that how uh, thing can be adaptation adaptation can be made it does not necessarily have to be the literal representation of the work famous work itself it can be like this also now this part is important i will just go through this quickly so according to scott mcleod the movement without within the comics has got this i mean there is uh, i mean when you are doing this there is a moment to moment action to action subject to subject scene to scene aspect to aspect and non sequitur let's see what what these things are this is moment to moment as evident from the name this type of panel transition links time with the action happening within the panel this is frank miller's the dark knight returns 1986 page 14 so this is what is happening uh, within within the comics um uh this is another example this is alec tots uh, batman this is possibly one of the better example some of you must be feeling like this after this such a long run i'm just going through quickly the action to action is usually featuring a single subject 
uh, visually records a series of panels featuring actions progressively. This is uh, another action to action. It, appear, apply, it appears in McLeod's book, Understanding Comics. This is from uh, Marjan Satrapi's famous work, Persepolis. This is action to action again. A little more sophisticated, but it is action to action, no doubt. And this is subject to subject. Uh, this is from Osamu Tezuka's Buddha. Uh, transition stay within the spe specific scene. Idea and call for more reader involvement. See, it is happening within the same time, in same time moment. But you see, it's within the same, there's a lot of things you got to, your brain is making a lot of connections to get an understanding of that someone actually throws the arrow, strikes the bird, and that's what's happening. This is also subject to subject. Um, figure it out yourself, you'll understand. Um, this is possibly one of the funniest ones. Uh, it's a 4th of July, you know what 4th of July is all about. Guy Fox Day. Uh, sorry, American Independence Day, my mistake. Uh, this is scene to scene, transition take place across significant distances, time and space. This is Watchman, Alan Moore. Uh, scene to scene, Persepolis, Marchand Satsupi. Again, time and space, they're different, but they're anyway connected. Very good series, Scott Pilgrim's Brian Lee O'Malley. And then aspect to aspect, transition, bypass time, and most part sets a wandering eye on different aspects. This one, so a lot of things are happening within the same time moment, but you see and as if you can. This is aspect to aspect. I think one of the best that I've seen in Red Tide, Jim Sterenko at its best. This, then aspect to this is Osamu Tezuka swallowing, swallowing the earth. A little complicated. And, I mean, then Art Spiegelman. Then non sequitur. It's a conclusion of statement that does not logically follow from the previous argument. The panels and sequence don't have any logical conclusion, but obviously if you read it, this is a graphic adaptation of Paul Oster's City of Glass by David Matsukeli. And uh, uh, this is, uh, if you read it, uh, then you need to know backstory, the comics, it'll make a lot of sense, but comic, in comics, we you also use this a lot. This is Walking Dead, more, more popular. And then this is another example of the same thing. But obviously, we, we should not stick to that. And it's not only that. This is from one of the best uh, things that I've read for a very long time. It's 6676 Operations of Kilofer by Patrice Kilofer. It is what kind of transition is this? Very difficult to say. This is another example from the same book. It is uh, a fantastic story. Read it and and and. It's a different kind of storytelling. It's 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 French are are, are of really sometimes some of them are audacious when it comes to storytelling. This is from Helpless. This is Honolulu Loris, Lava Love Love Lounge. And this is something by Diego Rivera, the famous Mexican artist who was married to Frida Kahlo. Um, and 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 this is uh, something where you also see a kind of transition and that is this is high considered to be high art mural and all that stuff but there is obviously there's some kind of sequentiality uh, we have next five slides to 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 sum up my thing everything will be summed up in this i hope so uh, if i can read Okay, this is, you know, I call him cartoonists, cartoonist, everyone calls him that. This is obviously from Peanuts. It said, Grandma, clickety clack, you hear on top, then clickety clack. Um, then you see it was a dark and stormy night, right? And 
Snoopy just takes it away and say, plagiarist, and throws it. So I don't know. We all learn from each other. You don't have to use too many words to say things. Second is this. This is also from Peanuts. Fourth of July is over and I, I didn't light a single firecracker. My dad says that when he was little, they had tiny firecrackers called lady fingers. They would light a whole string one at a time. They would go pop, 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 pop. When you tell a story, shuck, you have a tendency to go into too much detail. Remember this anything that you do, possibly summed up in the best possible way. This is how, when I say language and, and, and uh, visuals, this is Ernie Bushmiller at his best. Slavo, today is Jane's mask party. And please don't disgrace me by eating all the time. Oh, Nancy, I can eat all I want today. And they all be say they will just isn't he cute acting just like a pig. <laughs> See how you use the word and the expression. Here is a second one. Slago, let's go and see that movie in it's in three dimensions. I'm broke, but I'll show you movie in four dimensions. Okay, so that's cool. And this is also another one. Here comes Nosy Rosie. Don't you like television? No. Wait, Rosie, I'll get something from the seller. This might, maybe if you look at it through this, you will enjoy it more. <laughs> the nosy part. Okay, the last words are from Linda Barry, my favorite cartoonist, not one of the, my favorite cartoons from whom I learn everything. This is from a book, How to Make Comics. And I don't have to say it. I wanted to finish 10 minutes before one so that we'll get some question answer session coming in. Uh, and I think I've done it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Devuda, uh, for your extremely insightful session. So uh, quickly, if you have any questions, uh, people, then please feel free to ask Devuda your questions. Anybody? Uh, uh, for that matter, Devuda, our faculties are also here from the faculty. Yeah, anyone can ask a question. Yeah. I'm, 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 yeah. No question at all from anybody? What I would suggest, uh, Shudanna. Yes. Um, I guess, uh, it'll, I mean, there are a lot of things have been said. It'll take yeah. some time to. So the recording is here. So there. So you can share the recording with them and but, let them process it and get back to you if they have any questions i think i can share my email id and i'm writing it in the chat box so that yeah. if you have question please get back to me and i'll be happy to happy to answer because in seven semester in many of their classroom projects they're doing graphic narratives okay. so i think they might be having a lot of questions so you can get back to the Martha and like okay. look at the chat box no, so I, I think you can you can actually ask uh, questions if you have it now, like someone asked on the one shot thing. Yeah. So, um, Rahul, uh, you were you wanted some wanted something to be clarified. Rahul, are you there? Uh, no, no. I, I think I, I think he told me what a one shot was. Like a, it's like one feature kind of thing. Uh -huh. Telling it in one frame, that is what you meant, right? No, it may not be one frame, it's it, it, but that one. Is one shot. That is one time yeah. I did it. Okay. That's okay. it. 
can i can 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 i have a single person asking the question if there is one yeah saptarshi uh, i think your your audio is on uh, yes ma'am yeah so uh, then we'll call it today thank you debuda over to saptarshi for the concluding words yeah uh, thank you ma'am uh, uh, so i am here to present the vote of thanks for today's master class today's master class was uh, full of knowledge and loads of interesting things uh, i hope all of us have got great inspiration information and encouragement from this session uh, i would like to thank uh, our guest lecturer speaker uh, dev kumar sir for visiting and enlightening us with the with uh, his uh, vast and immense knowledge thank you thanks again uh, thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, Shudanna, thank you, Shaptarshi, and thank you all the students and everybody at the institute. So, to, thinking of me, uh, just one small bit. Um, what you saw is is just a glimpse into comics. It takes about ten days to to yes, sir. yes, sir. to get intimate with this. Sorry for rushing it through. I I, I wanted to just open a few doors and the record leave the recording so that. People can go through and 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 look at it at, at their leisure. Uh, and thank you again. And it was a wonderful. Um, I hope the, some ideas have gone across. Yes, and I hope this is just the beginning of a conversation which will take forward, and we'll look forward to having you on our campus. These were all our th third, fifth, and seventh semester students listening to you. So yeah, thanks once again. And so we'll conclude the session. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thanks. So thanks to all the students also, yes. Thank you.